Hello and welcome back. This time we want to talk about special, or maybe not that special, but also things which need to be mastered if we want to have a more complex logic. What do I mean with more complex logic? Well, up to now we have a bunch of inputs, an output, we can combine those inputs and the output is there or not, depending on the pattern of the input and of the input signals. We said the output might also be a function of time, so that there is an input and the pattern is then different and after some time something is changing, there need to be some time behavior. Or maybe we want to have uh, an output depending on the inputs and also on previous inputs, so we have to store somehow a state or something like this. So this is the task. We do need to have time, delay things, time things, and we do need to have memory. We do, we do need to store an information. Of course, we also have to delete this information again if we don't longer need it. So, uh, well, I will show you. Okay, I will show you. Uh, the following things might be necessary. So, this is the input time. And the input might look as follows. At some certain point, we change to one. Okay. This is the input xi. How shall the output look like? The output shall look like time. Exactly at the point where the input is rising, we change to one, stay there for a while, and then disappear. Yeah. So the input is a jump, and the output, the output is an impulse of a certain length, yeah. impulse length, Ti, let's call it. That's one possible thing, okay? Then, what is also possible is if the input is an impulse. So the input is an impulse of a certain length. Certain impulse length and the output stays at one. This is basically a memory function. This is why. This might be a doorbell. Yeah? Push the button and it makes ding dong. And that's it. You have to release the button and press it again and again. Ding dong. Okay? Would be possible. And this, if you want to turn on the light by the push of a button and then release the button, light will stay on. Yeah? And at later point in time, it might be exactly different. It might look like this, that we turn off the light. Okay? Push the button, turned off, um, like a memory function. And what is also a possibility? Here we have the input, here we have the output, 
that the input is an impulse. That the output is an impulse. Why not? Why not? Hmm? A different length, maybe. Right? So there is the input length, and there is the output impulse length. Hmm? And, well, we could think about several things. Huh? that the input is maybe smaller or bigger than the output impulse length. Both is possible. Why not? One example for this would be maybe a stereo light. You know, you push the button, release the button, light is on, and after a certain time, light goes off. Stairway light would be one possibility. Those things, they are not far-fetched, I would say. Yeah? They are. We have examples for this. Yeah? So they are not really that uncommon. Yeah? They are, indeed, they are very common. Yeah? So we need to master some crafts. Yeah? Next videos will be about mastering those crafts. Yeah? Mastering time, mastering memory. Let's see how a memory is built. That I can tell you. It is built like just with logic blocks, but we will see it then. For now, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.